So we have our next speaker is Kanav Sedia. Please go ahead. Hey everyone, um, how are you all doing? How was the hackathon? Hey, all this energy spent out or? <laughs> Come on. Uh, <laughs> yay. Yay, that's MIT. <laughs> All right, uh, first of all, I want to thank you, all of you, uh, for coming to this hackathon. Uh, as a quantum, as a member of the quantum community, I know you've had many other options. I, I know many freshmen and undergrad students are here. So I just want to thank you all uh, on behalf of quantum community for showing up. I'm, I'm sure you had like a lot of other things, a lot of other options, you know, crypto, AI, machine learning. Um, but for this weekend, you chose quantum. So thank you so much. I want to uh, give a round of applause to all of you. So the field itself is really nascent, and um, that you can, but, but it's growing incredibly fast. You can just look at the trend of uh, this hackathon itself. The first time we showed up, there were some amount of people, and then more people. This time around, uh, the traffic on Qbraid was twice the, then the, all the previous years combined. Yay. So the field is moving fast, and it, it's not just uh, how many people are getting interested, it's also, it, it seems uh, that pace of innovation is also increasing. We've been at MIT IQ Hack for the past three years. There have been a few key observations why uh, at, at this hackathon that makes this one of my favorite hackathons in the world. One is the, the uh, quality of ideas. Every time around, I've interacted with a lot of you, uh, personally, one-on-one, -on -one, and si having uh, sat through different presentations, I love how innovative all the ideas are. Like, it, it's crazy the, the amount of stuff you can accomplish in 24 hours. So uh, that, that's one. Uh, then the second part is, it's not just graduate students, PhDs. It's a really good mix of undergraduates uh, who are in their junior, senior years, and in some cases, freshmen as well. Sometimes like a few of the instances where I've had conversations one-on-one, -on -one, you're talking to someone for five minutes and you go, oh yeah, so where are you doing your PhD? And they say, no, 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 I'm just a freshman. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> Like really, like how can you have this kind of conversation with like so much details in just your freshman? And it's, those are the people we want to sell quantum computing hard to. Like this field definitely needs a lot of uh, really smart people. As the field starts to take off, uh, you can look at the trajectory of the classical computing. Right now it stands at more than 20 million software engineers. And if you look at how many quantum software engineers there are who are building applications for quantum computers, the number's like maybe really small fraction of that. And if you ask yourself, like this field does have a lot of potential, and, and if you go out five years and you ask yourself, does the field would have the same potential? If yes, then a lot of people are needed, which is where we need people to come in and build the next generation of applications. Just like with classical software, there's a very good chance that the most innovative applications are yet to be discovered. And you could be one of those people. Okay? And if you look at the trend over past year, you can see that um, the field is moving incredibly fast. Like we, we have a solid case to make in front of all of you. A uh, lot of improvement in the hardware world where um, if you look at the qubit numbers, that's increasing the quality of uh, the fidelity and the quality of qubits, that's also going up. Uh, the benchmarking, every couple of months you have some paper out on benchmarking, and that shows, hey, you can do something better um, on these new quantum computers. And then especially a uh, couple of really interesting results from the last year. Uh, you had Quantinium come, come out with an error correcting qubit. That was like, wait, that, that's uh, maybe like a year or two before than I would have expected it. Uh, you had uh, QRS Aquila machine launch. That was a big step. Uh, really excited about that machine. And uh, you've got a lot more modularities of qubits. People are making weird things into qubits. It's almost like 
if it talks like a duck, it walks like a duck, it's a qubit. It's like, really? Okay, let's just stop at some uh, number that you've got five different modalities and build more stuff uh, in focus direction. So uh, with a lot of progress, don't get me wrong, there's a long way to go. There, it's it's going to be a marathon. And we need more people to come in to keep on building so that we can uh, keep the excitement in the field and uh, build really cool applications. And uh, another important thing, this field does have all it takes to uh, take off. One, it's, it's a field with really interesting problems. So if you've got an intellectual mindset, you would have a lot of fun uh, working in this field. Second, a lot of investment is making into the field. People are investing huge amounts of money, so you will uh, have a good, very good future if you decide to go in this, uh, this field. Okay? Uh, then, hopefully I've given you some points to convince you that you should spend a lot of time uh, looking into this field. As you go embark upon your quantum journey, I want to make a quick case for where Kubrick comes in. Uh, with Kubrick, the idea started where I myself was spending a lot of time in quantum software and along with many other people. And we were s struggling with bugs and issues that had absolutely nothing to do with the quantum part. Uh, at this point, you shouldn't be dealing with pip installs and so on. And so that's where the, the first idea was, let's just put everything in the cloud. I mean, no two people should be spending time debugging the same error. That was the point, and that's why we put everything on the cloud, and that was essentially the first iteration of Kubraid way back in 2020, the first time we supported IQ Hack. So a lot of the features that you all use this time around, we weren't really thinking about it, but as we go through it, we wanna make your life super easy so you could focus on the quantum part of the problem, where the real value lies. Everything is uh, already set up. Your connections to the hardware, enough compute, your access to various different quantum computers, access to uh, different quantum software. We want to make sure we've tested it uh, enough and made them ready to go for you. Uh, funny story, I began like uh, testing it out, and one of the first things I tested was Qiskit and then TensorFlow. <laughs> Even this time around, we had some problems with TensorFlow. So <laughs> I apologize, but we would do better. I think that that's the kind of the problem we want to take off, where you just focus on the quantum part. Overall, it was wonderful to see a lot of you submitting jobs to Aquila, going through, uh, doing interesting stuff. Okay. Uh, another cool thing I noticed on Kubray this year was you all focused on certain quantum software and then certain quantum hardware. But while you were going through installing those quantum software to hardware, you may have discovered there are many other uh, different software that we have available for you. And that, I think, makes up a very good case for discovery. Um, so as more people come into the field, just like with Aquila came uh, on Kubraid and on Brocket a few months ago, so we hope a lot of people using Qiskit on Kubraid would find it and start exploring. We want to make Kubraid a place to build, to discover, and to innovate. Hopefully in the uh, coming years, we will also provide you functionality once the field is there to hopefully you know, monetize the amazing stuff you're building. And uh, that's pretty much it, I think, what I had it in mind. Let's see. Yep, uh, so once again, thank you for showing up to this hackathon. Thank you for using Kubrate. If you've got any questions, uh, suggestions for making Kubrate better, we would love to hear those. In general, if you want to collaborate on um, various things, classical software, quantum software, need more credits, need a beta access to a quantum computer, we can probably make that happen. So do reach out, contact at Thank you very much.